Greetings to one and all! I'm Funky Monkey. Welcome to my house of love. Oh, the things we have seen our times together, and the places we have... Oh, <laughs> excuse me a second. <laughs> How embarrassing. Hello? Ah, oh, yes, hello there. I was looking for a Mr. Funky Monkey? Yes, this is Funky Monkey. Yes, well, you might not believe it, but this is you from the future with a very important message. But before we get to that, if I've got it worked out right, your subject for today is the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Let's review it together! Released in 2003, the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen is loosely based on the Alan Moore comic book miniseries. By loosely based, I mean that it has all of the same characters, though the plot is radically different. This movie pits our League against a mysterious foe, who seeks to profit from a never-ending arms race. So dust off your cravat and shine up your rifle as we join the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. The year is 1899, and Britain and Germany are at odds. So what else is new? A British envoy travels to Africa to enlist the aid of legendary adventurer Alan Quatermain. When suddenly, Quatermain is attacked by unknown assailants. But even armed and armoured men are no match for this legendary adventurer. Cut to a rainy London. Really, movie? And we were getting along so well, too. Where we meet Captain Nemo of the Nautilus, Rodney Skinner, an invisible man, and one Mrs. Harker. We then shift our scene across town to meet one Dorian Gray. And our villain, the Phantom. No, not that Phantom. He's still very much a copyrighted character. Luckily, one of his henchmen is not what he seems. This is Special Agent Tom Sawyer of the US Secret Service. Yes. That Tom Sawyer, from the Mark Twain novel. Look, I know, but just go with it. Anyways, Sawyer starts a fight, and the Phantom withdraws. We're then whisked off to Paris to collect our final member, Mr Hyde. And of course, his better half, Dr Jekyll. Ah, the original pronunciation. Music to my ears. Well, make mine original, I always say. And so, with the League assembled, we set off for Venice, to protect a peace conference. Which goes about as well as you'd expect in a movie like this. But Quatermain has a plan! Quatermain's plan is to get ahead of the collapsing building chain and take out one building to stop the domino effect. Sawyer's input is to grab Nemo's automobile and get ahead of the collapse. And so, Venice is saved. And Quatermain hunts the most dangerous prey of all. But Dorian Gray isn't the picture of virtue he appears to be, and escapes on the Nautiloid. Yes, the Nautiloid. Nemo's personal exploration vessel. Though with them deadly blades, it looks more like a giant sushi machine to me. A phonograph disc reveals that the mission, and the League itself, is a lie. It also has a more sinister purpose. Grey set bombs around the ship, linked to sensors triggered by a dog whistle, which was also on the record. The resulting explosions cripple the Nautilus and threaten to sink her. And in the chaos, we learn the measure of a monster. Yes, with Dr. Jekyll's help, Mr. Hyde swims into the bulkhead and releases the jammed mechanism, draining the water and righting the ship. And a message from an invisible man leads the League to their destination. And so the stage is set for our finale. Somewhere in Mongolia, Phantom, who is in fact Professor Moriarty, has set up a factory to create an army of extraordinary gentlemen. And it's up to the League to shut it down. Skinner, our invisible man, plants explosives in the foundry while Hyde and Nemo rescue captured scientists and their families. And Vampire battles Immortal. Long story short, Mrs. H wins. Grey beholds his portrait, and the magic is viscerally undone. And Sawyer and Quatermain pursue Moriarty. 
Moriarty gets a proper kicking from Quartermain, but villains don't play fair. And using Sawyer as leverage, the Slippery Snake sinks a knife into the old hunter's back. And it falls to Tom Sawyer to stop him. Great shot, kid. That was one in a million. And so our movie ends with a funeral for Alan Quartermain. Rest in peace. So that was League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. And is it worthy of our house of love? Sadly, I'm afraid not. I think Alan Moore was right to distance himself from this one. While it's far from a bad movie, it's not great. Peter Brady's accent is dodgy, though at least she tries. Though really, that's my main gripe with the movie. That and the inclusion of Tom Sawyer. Aside from this, it's really not terrible, just quite forgettable. Once you get into it, however, it's quite good fun. Sure, it's hokey, cheesy, and rather disrespectful to a lot of literary classics, but it's not too long at 105 breathless minutes. Although the pace does drag as we're introduced to each member in sequence, overall though, The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen isn't a bad film, and as swan songs go, there have been much, much worse. So thanks for watching. Right then, so that important message. You've got a package coming. A very powerful little trinket. So when you get it, remember to discharge it regularly. All right, thanks for dropping by. So thanks again for watching. I've been Funky Monkey, and I'd like to introduce you to some friends of mine. Sursum Ursa, who now goes by her real name, Jill Bearup. Oh, they'll find her, yes. But she'll make them wish that they hadn't when they do. Happy Viking. Last seen cavorting with spectres of the night. Well, whatever floats his boat. The Trickster Bell, whom I haven't talked to in ages. I should do something about that. Rantasmo of Needs More Gay. LGBT representation in comedy academia? What's not to love? And Micro Funky. Helping me to cover the gaps that YouTube tore in my originals. At one time, we were the heroic legion of positive reviewers. Now, maybe not so much. But hey. Anyway, that's our show. I've been Funky Monkey, inviting you to join me next time for more fun and frolics. So long, folks!